Welcome to IoT TV. We are pleased to be joined today by Andy Rhodes, the VP and GM of Commercial IoT at Dell. Welcome, Andy. Thanks. Great, great to be here. And uh, Bill, thanks for thanks for having me. No problem. Um, we wanted to uh, give you an opportunity to kind of get a chance in terms of um, your um, kind of journey there at Dell with IoT and kind of where you've. Uh, where you've started and where you've seen it go, and uh, and what you're what you're expecting to see for 2017 in IoT. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, IoT is this this very big word, and uh, and it encompasses so, so much now, Bill. But the way we see it here at Dell is, it's all about the collection and the analytics of data. So whether you're you know working in an oil rig, you know, off the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, and you're, you're looking at sensors on your oil rig, collecting data on flow of, of oil, or, you know, whether you're looking at your refrigeration units in a, in a supermarket chain to make sure you're storing your food at the right temperature for each of those foods so you don't poison your customers, whether you're a jet, you know, engine, and you're, you're collecting all the data on that engine as it's flying over the Atlantic, it's really about the data and the, the flow of the data and then how do you analyze that data for some sort of business gain. And at Dell, we see most of our customers think about business gain really around four major areas. The first is, how do I gain efficiencies? You know, so if I'm uh, you know, a logistics company, how do I use less fuel on my trucks? Um, or if I'm doing smart agriculture, you know, how do I increase the yield of my crop in fact, I was with a really interesting customer just this week up in uh, the New York area who are doing vertical farming and using sensors and all the data to gather, you know, the, uh, the whole temperature and environment so they can grow optimal crops indoors. Um, and so that's all about efficiencies. The second business area that we see a lot of our customers use IoT and invest in sensors and the collection and analytics is around uh, safety, you know, so having safer environments for for their people or, or, their, or their customers. Um, the third is enhancing the product. So if you think about you know, the fact that you can now put sensors anywhere at a cost, you, know, you can make chairs that will automatically you know, shape themselves to your body based on pressure points you know, in your back. Um, and so the third is, is this whole area of improved customer service, which you know, the CMO and the marketing, you know, people we speak to are very interested and they're sort of driving those projects. And then the last one, and this is where just the business gets super exciting, is net new revenue models. And the example I like to use there is one of uh, elevator companies. So if you ask elevator companies what they do today, they'll tell you that they, they build steel cages that move people up and down buildings. But in the future, with IoT type of technology, you think about they can start to um, charge for rides per floor per person. So rather than sell, you know, building a, a whole elevator and it, with a big, big capex uh, cycle across multiple years, they can now, you know, sell that as an opex model. So the building manager just pays for how many people move up and down that building. They can use real sense cameras to identify who's in the elevator, and that you can sort of do digital signage targeting the people that's in the elevator as a new revenue stream. So you've, you've moved from really building steel cages to being an advertising company very, very quickly. So all those things in the realm of possibility now that you have sort of data everywhere and you can collect all of that data. So, so we see it as how do we help our customers at Dell? Number one, connect the unconnected. So a lot of the, the things out there are not net new. They're factory production lines. They are you know, trucks that already exist in the world. There's a lot of new things as well, and they all use radically different I.O. protocols. So Zigbee, Z-Wave, a lot of legacy protocols, Canvas, BackNet, uh, ProfiNet. And so the first problem for a lot of our customers is how do I connect all of that data to the corporate network? Um, the second problem is once I get that data into the corporate network, how do I do analytics on that data? And if you think about, you know, 30, 40, 50, uh, I've even heard 100, 200 billion connected devices over the next, you know, three or four years, well, backhauling all of that data into public clouds for the analytics piece is, is just not possible. Whether it's a latency issue, 
whether it's a cost of transferring the data, there's connectivity. Some of our customers have this data in places where there is no internet connection. Uh, think about, you know, down a mine in Western Australia or in a, in a dam in, in the middle of the mountains in Peru, you don't have always on connectivity to send all that data to the cloud. So you have to start the ana analytics process way, way closer to the edge of the network. And so that's where Dell helps starting with our IoT gateways that do the collection and then start the analytics process to start filtering the data in, in sort of near real time at the edge. And then you can send all of that data back from multiple gateways you know, into uh, your data center, our customers' data centers, or, or private clouds. And then you have to manage all that data, and you have to manage all of the, that equipment that manages and analyzes the data. So essentially what Dell does is we provide the IT infrastructure below uh, uh, an IoT project. Great. What um, You've seen a lot of good customer success stories, but you've probably seen some challenges also. What challenges have you seen that organizations face and, and how have they overcome some of those in implementing IoT? Yeah, I think what's, what's really interesting is the challenges in my mind fall into two major buckets. The first one is a technology challenge, um, which is what sensors do I use? How do I collect the data? You know, what does my gateway look like? Do I need a gateway? How do I do the analytics? Which platform do I choose for that analytics? How do I stitch data together from multiple different sources? You know, how do I do the integration work? That's really, you know, the, the tech problem that needs to get solved. And by the way, there isn't one IoT solution for that. Um, we often talk about this, this notion of every IoT project is a snowflake. And what we mean by that, they, they sort of all look the same until you, you know, you look at a snowflake, they all look the same until you put them under a microscope and then they're all, you know, a little different. Um, so, so one of the problems is what, what is the right tech and how do I put it, put it all together? And, you know, we can help there with our services organization. We work with a lot of services partners, you know, like Accenture and Deloitte and Capgemini and others. So, so the first problem is a tech problem. Um, the second problem though, and I think by far the one that, that has the least visibility into the market is the rest of the organization and the culture. And, and what I mean by that is a lot of these projects um, involve traditional IT people because IT knows how to create large data lakes, they know how to do big data analytics, they understand you know, AI at the edge to some extent, but they have to work with organizations they've never worked with and we call those operation technology so they have to work with people who, who understand the factory floor they have to work with people that are you know farmers they have to uh, you know work with people that are fisher fishermen they have to work with you know their operations people in the stores and retail environments and you know this is not not saying that everyone's like this but often those two organizations have radically different objectives radically different you know, um, uh, key performance indicators. They think about things in, in very, very different ways, and they often haven't worked together hand in hand. So this sort of coming together of OT and IT with this differing philosophy on what their roles is, is a big, big challenge that we've seen a lot of our customers go through. The ones that get it right are the ones that team straight away and understand each other's role and, and really sort of figure out how they're going to work together. Some of our customers have, have invested in, you know, um, people such as chief digital officers. <laughs> um, that's the, the sort of term I've heard, you know, quite a bit where they really understand both sides of that equation and are there to drive sort of that transformational change into, uh, into their businesses. But then there's other things like sales. If you're coming together and actually selling an IoT solution, the sales force that you had before isn't the same sales force you might need uh, for your new solution, or you might have to retrain them. Your marketing department you know, might have to radically change who their buyer is and how they market to this new buyer. Um, you know, your accounting team, you know, if you're moving from a CapEx model to an OpEx model, your, your, your IT systems, your accounting systems might not take into account of that. So there's this whole cultural side that, that I think gets sort of underplayed and, and it's sort of 
you know, the tech becomes somewhat the easy part. You know, I've heard that that um, played back to me a couple of times by our customers. But the integration into the rest of the business fabric, the changing of your business processes is is an area that, that our customers really have to think about. That's interesting because uh, I wrote an article about the Chief Internet of Things Officer, Andy, and, and, and it alluded to that same thing, is, is that organizations historically have not worked together on this level, on this scope. Um, I wondered if you could um, maybe um, give us a series of lessons learned, best practices, or those types of things, or, or you know, kind of advice you would have for people contemplating you know, getting into IoT, uh, an IoT installation, that kind of thing. You probably learned a lot by all the customers you've talked to, correct? So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think at an organizational level, you know, the, there's a number of, of elements. One is it can be really daunting, um, you know, to get started. And I've seen a lot of customers think about all the things they can do, you know, just get started. You know, a lot of the data already exists in the organization and, and, and so, you know, figure out what the biggest problem is in your business that you need to sort of transform and pick a project and get started. And um, you'll, you'll learn a huge, huge amount. Security is, is still, you know, by far one of the biggest um, areas of concern and, and rightly so. But I've seen a lot of customers who uh, become paralyzed and, and, and I, I always say, hey, be paranoid, but not paralyzed. And paranoia is a good thing here. Ensure you work with the right set of partners that really understand what security means in an IoT setting because essentially you're opening up a much, much larger surface area for attack, you know, through these sensors or the things that you have, whether that's, you know, a drone or a sensor or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. So security becomes, you know, absolutely critical. But I think getting the business buy-in and, and really understanding what is the objective, what is the return on investment, is everybody bought in from the CFO down to the business unit owners, and, and, and the calculation of the return on investment for a specific IoT project, that's the second biggest inhibitor after security that, that we see that gets mentioned in a lot of you know, the surveys you know, that are done across the analyst firms but it also played back, you know, in, in you know, from our customers directly to us. And I think one of the one of the things that we've seen really, really successful is is about partnership. It's about these soft skills of people being able to work together across the business, from sales to marketing to IT to operations to you know to strategy and and, and finance. You have to almost bring a tiger team together. And, you know, and really everyone understands what the output of these projects are and what the return on investment for the business is on one of these projects. And, and by the way, sometimes the, the people incurring the cost are not all, always the people, you know, looking at the, you know, at the benefit. Uh, for instance, you go back to my example of refrigeration management in sort of large retail environments. Think, you know, the supermarkets we shop in all the time. Well, you know, today a lot of those, you know, uh, refrigeration units are, are just run way too cold because, you know, uh, those retailers don't want to poison their customers. So they store everything colder than they need to um, because the people that are in charge of food safety uh, don't pay the electricity bills. <laughs> um, and, and so what happens is often the food is safe, but it, it sort of deteriorates. If you ever look at uh, eating yogurt and sometimes you get it home and it has that film of water on the top, that's because it's stored too cold that it squeezes the, the, the water out of the yogurt. And a lot of customers then think it's bad, but it's not. So there's always this bunch of trade-offs between, you know, uh, in, in this case, do I poison my customers? Do I spend too much on electricity? Or do I have disappointed customers because they think my product is bad? Well, get all the people involved in that chain and you can sit down and, and really understand what the return on investment is going to be by doing better refrigeration management through sensors, through data, you know, which is which is IoT. So security is a big one. The return on investment is another big one. And then I, you know, think more and more the successful deployments we've seen is where the soft skills that organizations have around collaboration is a key ingredient to success. That's super. Thanks very much, Andy. Um, so you, you and Dell are pretty bullish about IoT in 2017. Um, mm -hmm. What would you suggest for people that would like to find out more information about Dell or are contemplating um, 
you know, a project such as this? Well, we'd love to speak to them. That, that's the first thing. I mean, we, we think that, you know, we've, we actually formed a, a dedicated organization over, over two years back now um, to tackle the problem and bring, bring the tech together. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, you can visit our website, talks a little bit about, uh, you know, what we're doing in terms of connecting the unconnected and helping with this analytics process. And we also have some consulting services, as I mentioned before. Um, but but we we're passionate about it, and we we think that because we've spoken to hundreds and and deployed hundreds of solutions here, we can we can really help with some best practices and and understand the processes, not just on the tech side, but also you know how to make some of this more process driven and cultural things um, you know work. But but often my advice is like, get started, pick a project. You know, there's, there's nothing better than real life learnings. And, and whether it's a small sort of project to get started or it's a transformational one, you know, it starts with that first step of, of jumping in and, and, and going for, you know, going for some of this transformation. Super. Well, thank you very much for um, your information, Andy. That has been very helpful. Uh, thanks for um, being with us on TV IoT and, uh, we look forward to speaking with you in the future. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate it.